What's going on everyone? My name is D Anthony and we're going to be covering the FOMC stock market. We're going to do a little bit of an update here on the price of the triple Q, which is the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. So today, a little bit started off a little bit weird, right? A little bit choppy. Um, a lot of guys in the discord did make some money kind of bouncing off those lower levels on those intraday timeframes, taking it off the 200. Um, letting stocks pull in and then kind of bouncing it back up into supply. But if we look at the triple Qs, we were down two points today, just about half a percentage point. So, you know, on paper, wasn't a horrible day. It's not like the stock market got obliterated on JPAL and the FOMC meeting notes. But one thing that I kind of do want to point out here, if we look at the daily candle here on the triple Qs, which is the NASDAQ 100, we came down into this 20 day moving average and kind of are sitting right there resting at yesterday's lows, okay? So if you look at today's candle, this is an inverse hammer candle. It's really never a good thing. So one thing that I am going to kind of be focused on for tomorrow, especially with the stocks that I like to trade, like the NVIDIAs, the AMDs, AMD actually got blown up on that earnings. But, you know, things like Apple, Google, uh, Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, what I'm really looking at here is if we get any type of green open or any type of pop off the open or some type of gap up in the pre-market and then we start to fade, right, like after an hour or two hours, what I'm going to look for here is do we confirm today's lows? That 317.22 area, if we start to give that up, we've got just a little bit of support here at 316.32. But what I want to kind of point out here is anything below 316.32, I'm going to look to start taking a short position, whether I take a short position on the index itself or on one of the correlating stocks, depending on what their daily charts look like here. Because if we do start to give up this channel here, we've got a lot of room to kind of come back down and back test all the way to around 311. Now, big picture wise, this does nothing to the bulls. This bulls are still in overall control as long as we maintain holding that 50 day moving average, but we could definitely see some downside pressure where we're gonna be able to make some money going down to the downside, either buying put options or shorting some stock. So that's my update here on the triple Qs. In order for us to kind of get, you know, break out and put in some new highs, we're just gonna have to take out the highs going back two days ago to 323. So we are about five, six dollars away from actually testing and breaking through that. But you can kind of see if I pull up my drawing tool here, we've been in like about a month long distribution in a range here. So basically the last couple of days, we came up to the top of the range. We got rejected as we did here and as we did here. And now we're just falling back to the bottom of the range. Normally, once we get back down to the bottom of this range, we do get a little bit of a bounce. So I could see maybe a pullback into 316, 315 area, and then potentially a reversal back up to the middle of the range. However, if we are gonna take a little bit of a pause and we are gonna take a little bit of a breather, then as soon as we start to lose this channel level below 316, we've got a lot of room down to, like I said, 311. This is the short position where you're gonna to wanna to make some money, okay? So bulls have been making a lot of money. For all of you perma bears out there, if you guys are looking to make some money, then this is gonna be your opportunity here, but just make sure you kind of clean up your position here at that 50 day moving average. There will be another short position if we do start to close below the 50 day moving average. That would be 308 all the way down to 302. So that's the level on the triple Qs and the NASDAQ. That's what's going on with big tech. Let's like take a look at the overall markets and look at the S&Ps. Now the S&Ps have lost their 20 day moving average as well as their five day. And these are also on an inverted hammer here. You can see closing at the lows from yesterday here. If we do start to give up and we start to confirm 407.50s, we can come down to the 50 EMA at around 405. Now I would expect a little bit of an intraday bounce here at 405, just due to the fact that if you kind of go back in time, we found some previous support at this 50 EMA previously so if you go back one two three four five six days you can see when we found that support down here at this 50 ema so if we do start to give up this level of around 408 tomorrow then you can definitely see us come down into that 405 again for all of you guys who like to play the spx and you guys like to trade these zero days till uh zero days till expirations on the indexes. This could be a good little trade here. You know, you're looking at anywhere between a dollar, two dollars, and maybe potentially three dollars to the downside. Again, as we get into this zone, make sure you are taking those profits off the table. Let it consolidate. See, do we bounce? Cause you might have an opportunity to kind of go back up to the upside here. But if we do close below this Bollinger Band and beneath this 50 EMA, then our next major support here is gonna be 402.80. I didn't really see anything significant come out of the FOMC meeting notes today. Nothing really caught me by surprise. There's nothing too alarming in there. It's all some more of the same stuff. 
I'm not really a fundamental trader. I am more so of a technical based trader. So what I'm gonna do is allow those fundamentals and allow that, that news and those headlines to kind of confirm with my technical analysis. And then I'm gonna start taking those trades. If you guys are interested in learning how to trade, learning how to find the setups, learning supply and demand, and just learning an overall better process so you guys can be more adequate and fit to kind of trade these markets, then definitely make sure to join the Discord. That link is down in the description box below, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.